Ali, this is Superboy Zero, which probably needs me to explain what the Zero issues were, which is odd because they were not consistent. Every day, say comic, or nearly every day, say comic. They released a special issue zero at the end of the crossover zero hours Christmas in time. And the zero issues were some of them were Fallout and Aftermath from the crossover, like Green Lantern's issue. That is basically a part of Zero Hours, if you ask me. Then you had ones like this, which were not really related to the crossover and were more of a jumping on point for a series. Some of them went back and established new aspects of... The character's history, there is a little bit of that in here. And some of them started a new series, which is ridiculous. One element of Ganon Backwards is we feature the bad guy from the first issue of this series, Sidearm. And I have thought of the best possible description of Sidearm. Sidearm is a bad guy that Tom Falcon would create at Marvel for the Mc2 universe. I didn't need to say anything else about them. This issue is just set after zero hours. There is nothing from zero hours that is important in this. Just treat this as Superboy issue 8.5. So Superboy, he is fighting Sidearm and obviously wins because it is Sidearm. If I remember correctly, Sidearm, he joins the Suicide Squad and dies... Uh, there is a Superboy story about 10 issues after this with the Suicide Squad. And there is a bunch of his baddies on it. Tiger Shark, Sidearm, the Super Hot Redhead, who I cannot remember what I called her. I'll review that eventually. Uh, Suicide Squad didn't have a comic when this series was coming out. So that story arc felt very welcome. Superboy's exotic love interest is a freelance news reporter. And she has hit the jackpot with Superboy. But she isn't exactly Lewis. She is not that professional, she is not that scrupulous, she's not even that successful. And then there is the area of contention, which is that she might just be using Superboy to further her career. We have some more secondary characters, and these get... Drop from the book not long after this. We have Superboy's sleazy talent manager with the subtle name of Rex Leach. And we also have Dubstep from Project Pegasus, who is like Superboy's guardian, his parental figure sort of... He is watching over Superboy. And then we have Rex Leach's daughter. Who was like a dumb bimbo. He pimped out to 
lure and seduce Superboy into signing with him. But her character kind of terraformed a bit. And she was starting to become a legit love rival. She doesn't stick around much longer either. I think just a bit longer than Rex. But this is all setting stuff up quite well for a new reader. But I think the real zero issue content is Superboy going into a lab to have Dr. Science test Science Man run tests on him and study his abilities while Superboy explains how he was made. I realise I haven't reviewed issues of Superboy in ages before yesterday, so I will repeat, this series is one of my favourites. I love this character, I love this creative team. If you read the 90s Superman books, especially the Death of Superman ones, and you liked the Superboy issues that were in Adventurings of Superman, you really should follow up with his ongoing series, which is by the same people. And I have said before that this woman, who you have got to turn sideways, which I love dating, she has got very nice legs. Just the legs, they are likely heavily photoshopped to look amazing. I'm sure that this woman, she was in Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2. Good legs though, very, very good legs. Here we are getting the zero issue sort of stuff. We have the originy of Superboy retold to us. Project Pegasus, they attempted to clone Superman. But it was awoken too soon. So that is why he resembles a teen. Instead of a fully grown up Superman. They also brought him out before Project Pegasus could. Program him to be a weapon. Or be loyal to them. And this is before John Jeffries came along. And unimaginatively made him a clone of Superman mixed with Lenny Lufus's DNA. Superboy had a completely worthwhile origin, a great backstory. He didn't need Superman's arch enemy shoe-owned into his mythology like that. He stood on his own before John Jeffries. And then here we are seeing a new part of Superboy's history. And that is his first encounter with Sidearm. And you should be thinking that Sidearm is very reminiscent of Spider-Man's classic four. Dan Slot. It is intentional. I really hope it is intentional anyway. Uh, Superboy, he fought Sidearm before he understood all of his powers or how to even use them. But since the bad guy is reminiscent of Dan Slot, he gets beaten anyway. And left for the cops. And this is the panel that I think makes it clear that this was a deliberate homage or homage. Apparently homage is the correct way to say it. But I prefer homage because it sounds classier. 
in the present, Superboy, he gets a pair of goggles that allow him to mimic Superman's X-ray vision and Superman's heat vision. And as you would expect, straight away uses the X-ray vision to perv on his girlfriend. It was the 90s. Objectification was in. Objectification was radical. We end with a teaser for the next issue, which is the first appearance of Tiger Shark. He is indisputably on this page. This is his first appearance. Not the next issue, which I reviewed yesterday. This here, this is definitely Tiger Shark's first appearance. This is an okay issue. There isn't a tremendous amount going on, but it was designed to entice and reel in new readers. And I think it does a pretty good job at that. It fills you in on the character's backstory. It introduces some new stuff like is Goggles and Tiger Shark. It shows enough of his support and cast and his relationships with them. And we get to see Superboy be both a hero and a voyeur of the female form. And that is his character in a nutshell. I'll give this issue seven thumbs up.